2024 appropriation bill debates intensify at National Assembly as MDAs defend sectoral estimates. Hello, this is the Network News on NTA. Glad you could join us. I'm Naja Atutujani. Michael Olaleye is standing by in Lagos. Remember that this broadcast is also being streamed live on our website, nta.ng slash live. You can catch the replay on our YouTube channel. And of course, follow us across all social media platforms for the latest. The federal government has implored new members of the National Council on Privatization, NCP, to be on the front line of actualizing the renewed hope agenda of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu's administration. State House correspondent Abdurrahman Jibrila reports that Vice President Kashim Shatima stated this while inaugurating the newly constituted NCP at the presidential villa emphasizing that President Tinubu's choice of the council's membership is a reminder of what it can achieve with fresh ideas. It's a great pleasure to officially inaugurate the National Council on Privatization and congratulate each member for this honor to serve the nation. I extend my best wishes to all members as we embark on this crucial the challenge to this council members is championing great reforms through disruptive minds and ideas. Vice President Kashim Shatima, who is also the chairman of the council, said, The diverse talents and great depth of experience of persons approved as members of this council speak volume of their ability to deliver. It also signifies a steadfast commitment and a resolute belief in the shared vision for a country with opportunities, growth and empowerment representing collective pledge to propel the economy, build robust infrastructure, forge pathways to employment and nurture an environment where productivity flourishes. By this approval, the Council is now entrusted with piloting the nation's economic sector reform, privatization, commercialization and public-private partnership program for the next four years. And so these are the methodologies. And I think that what's different is that this will be where the emphasis lies, producing a stable macroeconomic environment, restoring confidence for investment that will grow the economy. And a clear and important part of that is to know what are the assets of government. What actually does government have? What is it worth? And um, we have the Ministry of Finance Incorporated. Uh, the board was recently announced, I'm sure it will be inaugurated soon. Their job, number one job, is to update and complete a robust asset register that tells us what the government owns and what it is worth. So what the Bureau and NCP bring to bear in you know, solving some of these uh, problems uh, is to be able to optimize government-owned uh, assets and entities uh, in order to generate revenues outside uh, the borrowing scope, the debt scope, uh, in order to be able to fund uh, the fiscal plans uh, of, the, of the government um, for the year 2024. What remains now is ensuring accelerated growth of the economy, providing infrastructure, creating jobs, and providing an enabling environment for productive activities to flourish, leveraging on the nation's enormous resources for the benefit of Nigerians. From the State House, Abraham Jibrila, NTA News. The House of Representatives Committee on Appropriation has described projected revenues in the 2024 Appropriation Bill as insufficient to fund the budget for the next fiscal year. The committee has therefore summoned the Minister of Finance, Governor of the Central Bank and Heads of Government-Owned Enterprises to appear before the House on Monday and further provide insight into projected revenue targets. National Assembly correspondent Mitaire Ibrahim reports. The objective of this engagement with the Minister of Budget and National Planning is to highlight key issues in relation to the preparation, enactment and implementation of the 2024 budget. We study the budget, fantastic budget, brilliant, but we need funding from GOEs. 
Their declaration, honestly, for us is not enough. The minister emphasizes that the removal of fuel subsidy and liberalization of the foreign exchange market helped the federal government to arrive at ambitious capital expenditure for the next fiscal year. But more, he says, is expected from revenue generating agencies. Globally, revenue that we collect as a proportion of GDP is about 10%. Mm -hmm. The president has expressed the confidence, the, the directive that we must raise it to at least 18%. What we need to do to focus on is debt service to revenue, which is very high. That's why I said the discussions about revenue, we can't stop talking about them enough. The committee turned back representatives of the CBN, Customs and FIROS demanding their chief executives to appear in person. Meanwhile, the House Committee on FCT Area Councils and Ancillary Matters has canvassed provision of critical infrastructure in the suburbs of the nation's capital during an interactive session with the Minister of State FCT, Maria Mahmoud. We will work together towards the development and betterment of residents of the territory and also visitors alike. The committee says it would continue to legislate on policies that will accelerate development across the FCT area councils. From the National Assembly, Mitaire Ikben, NTA News. Still on legislation, good governance and dividends of democracy are two critical derivatives of liberal democracy. And without the rule of law, these components become elusive, say lawmakers at a workshop convened by the House of Representatives Committee on Political Party Matters in partnership with Brick Mount Concept Services. Ignatius Sunkwa tells us more. The concept of rule of law seems so simple but remains the fulcrum of democracy. At this symposium, participants were particular in the place of rule of law in good governance and sustainable development. So the legal framework represents what? Rule of law, which ensures impartiality in terms of participation in decision making for good governance. A program that will focus on post-election development and how political office holders should fulfill their own part of the social contract Everybody that have been elected have been sworn in. We need good governance, we need peace to make the country move forward. Whatever the decision of the majority, we have to pass it like that. Where the rule of law is not obeyed, you discover that the society will be governed arbitrarily. This cousins here highlighted corruption, lack of patriotism, and deficient constitutional provisions as major impediments to the rule of law in Nigeria. Ignatius Nkwo, NTN News. Revisiting the tragic event at Tudumbiri, the National Security Advisor Nuhu Ribatu has assured the victims of the drone misfire of Tudumbiri of justice and support from the federal government ensuring thorough investigation. Muhammad Umar Ajingi tells us more. The survivors of the accidental drum misfire at Tudumburi community are still in shock as the incident has left many women widows overnight, children orphans for a lifetime. This four-year-old Muzwa Hunura, though not quite familiar with the sorrowful moment, lost his parents during the incident, which is the story of many children in this village after the accidental drum yeah, misfire. The National Security Advisor, accompanied by the Kaduna State Governor, are here to sympathize with families of the victims. President Bola Ahmed Tunibu, when this matter, I mean, when it happened, instantly he stopped what he was doing in Dubai. He came back. And even while he was on his way, he gave instructions that there must be an inquiry and a thorough investigation to determine exactly what happened and take appropriate measures to see that it will not happen again. Of course, uh, the NSO may declare to all of us that this thing will be done within a time frame. And I have no doubt in my mind, President Asaj Wola Makini is someone who is always serious whenever he made any statement. While in the community to identify with the people in this difficult moment, the National Security Advisor joins families of the victims to observe the Friday prayer before visiting the mass grave where the victims are buried. 
A group of northern senators were also in Kaduna to sympathize with families of the victims as well as the Kaduna state government. In Kaduna, I'm Muhammad Murajingi, NTA News. The Minister of Information and National Orientation, Mohamed Idris, is calling for support for the Nigeria Union of Journalists as the government prepares to unveil a groundbreaking charter on citizen code designed to define and uphold the core values which unite Nigerians. The minister stated this at the second NUJ milestone recognition of media icons in Nigeria held in Lagos, giving assurance that the charter would seek to entrench in all Nigerians a balanced understanding of their rights and responsibilities as citizens of the greatest black nation. He held the leadership of the NUJ for nurturing the idea of recognizing the invaluable contributions of pace setters and icons of the media profession to the development of the country. The federal government's image maker urged the media professionals to hold governments, politicians and leaders accountable while also being committed to reporting progress and development. The minister was represented at the occasion by the Director General of the Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria, Dr. Mohamed Bulama. The Ministry of Health describes as unacceptable and unsafe the use of rapid test kits to screen blood for transfusion. This was reiterated at the National Blood Donor Day celebration where outstanding lifesavers were honored in Abuja. Salwa Khalil Ibrahim was there for NTA News and now reports. Michael is a voluntary blood donor and has donated 76 times. Well, it feels great to be part of a, uh, a solution in and this, in this instance donating blood to save lives of people who are in need of blood transfusion. I had the need for an emergency CS, so uh, they were looking for blood everywhere, so, so I was told after the surgery. So after then when I got home, I began to think how I could also contribute so that the bank would not, never run dry. Every day, accidents happen. Women in labor or persons with pre-existing health condition may require blood transfusion and voluntary blood donors, oftentimes family members, are the first port of call. These heroes keep the blood banks red and flowing. And that is why the National Blood Service Commission is honoring them. The objectives of this year's campaign are to, one, celebrate and thank individuals who donate blood and to encourage those who have not yet donated blood to start donating. The Ministry of Health and Social Welfare says safe and adequate blood is an integral part of national health care policy. The Federal Ministry of Health and Social Welfare has been at the forefront to improve blood safety and availability in Nigeria. With the likes of Michael, Many lives will be saved and the world will be a better place. Sandra Kalo, NTA News. This is the Network News on NTA. Endowed with rich knowledge, human resources, and commitment to national development, as exemplified by his special guests this Friday, President Bola Tinubu says Nigeria has no reason not to succeed. The president was that assertive when he received participants of Senior Executive Course 45 of the National Institute for Policy and Strategic Studies at the State House. State House correspondent Musbao Nawahab reports. Here is a group of Nigerians who have answered the call for national assignment through the National Institute for Policy and Strategic Studies in Kuru. And the nation's policy and strategy reservoir is about to witness a boost again. This set of senior executive course is set for graduation, but not before the presentation of their report to the Commander-in-Chief. The presidential charge to this set was to delve into issues, challenges and prospects for industrialization, energy security and climate change in Nigeria. I'm delighted to inform you that the participants concluded the assignment with utmost zeal, dedication and drive. It included extensive individual and group research works and rigorous intellectual debates. 
After months of research within Nigeria and around the world, the participants have gone, they have seen, and their presentations here are a reflection of rigorous exercise with both retrospective and forward-looking. They found challenges, but not without policy options for the way forward, including optimization and diversification of Nigeria's energy resources. The federal and sub-national governments should fast track the adoption of climate smart agricultural and land use management practices in Nigeria in line with the National Agricultural Resilience Framework as part of Nigeria's climate adaptation and mitigation strategy. Thank you very much. Clearly appreciative, President Bola Tinubu has found these recommendations useful and capable of enhancing the deliverability of his administration agenda. You have fished out the issues. You have knocked on the challenges and you have recommended pre, you know, uh, very constructive prospect and through the roadmap to achieve a sustainable goal and development for our country. Definitely, our hope is renewed. Equally encouraged as it was, the president assures that their meticulous efforts would not go in vain. And you've charted the roadmap to Nigeria's recovery. It's left for us to pull together in our teams. If tinkering is necessary, I assure you we will. As I sat here thinking along with the presentation, I could see the problems. Imagine what we have missed in the past and what could call and what we need to do. I assure you that we take immediate actions. We will definitely give you credit for a good job done. The 97 participants of the Senior Executive Course 45 2023 of the National Institute for Policy and Strategic Studies are the latest addition to the nation's foremost policy and strategy experts from the State House, Musbao, then we have NT News. President Bola Tinubu has also expressed optimism about the prospects of increased investments from Shell Petroleum Development Company of Nigeria, SPDC, emphasizing Nigeria's long-term relationship with the company, which discovered the first commercial oil field at Oluibiri in the Niger Delta in 1956. Receiving the management of Shell Group, led by its global integrated gas and upstream director, Zoe Yunovic, the president said his administration would continue to ensure the security and viability of existing and new investments in the country spearheaded by his administration. The president also re-emphasized his administration's determination in resolving all investment-related issues to ensure there is no bottleneck which is too difficult for the country to remove in its determination to make Nigeria the African haven for large-scale investment in all key sectors. Outlining a substantial commitment of one billion US dollars over the next five to ten years aimed at unlocking gas resources for domestic use and the Nigeria liquefied natural gas project, Ms. Yunovich expressed Shell's commitment to maintaining its legacy of investments in Nigeria, particularly as the company refocuses its investment into new and existing opportunities in the deep water and gas sector, also announcing an imminent five billion US dollars investment. Cosmopolitan University Abuja says it is exploring unique opportunities to broaden knowledge sharing and research in Nigeria, integrating active engagement in technology. Boss Sede Abel was at the signing of a memorandum of understanding between the institution and partners in Abuja. 
Quick survey on new search trends by Google revealed that the interest of Nigerians in artificial intelligence has reached an all-time high, going by 310% in 2022 to 1,660% in the last five years. With the world focusing on this new wave of technology, the Cosmopolitan University is pushing forward and embracing this trend by empowering its students with skills that meet international standards. Education is not merely a transfer of knowledge. It is a catalyst for personal and societal transformation. This memorandum of understanding between the Cosmopolitan University and partners, including Atlantic Development, Global Wissing Consult, Cisco, and Confucius Institute for Mandarin, is a motivation for all parties towards inclusive innovation and collective attainment of the new tech field. So artificial intelligence by design of this university is going to be embedded in every course, in every module, in every subject that the students are learning. This school is by far better than any school I've been to in my secondary level. So I like how I, I know I'll become smarter and I'll learn quicker here and gain more from here in the academic expert. I've picked interest in computer, even if I'm a nursing student, I've picked interest in that. With the facilities the school has made available, it's easier. We're understanding better and the lecturers make it an interactive class always. With admission still ongoing, Cosmopolitan University has taken advantage of global multinational technology companies networking around digital space, fostering cross-cultural understanding with entrepreneurial skills that will turn the institution's dream into a reality. To be among the top five universities in Nigeria, by 2030 in Abuja. News. Participants at the 2023 National Advertising Conference are confident that ideas and knowledge shared will be put to use for national growth and development. Musa Abubakar reports. It's day three of the National Advertising Conference 2023, and the breakout sessions are coming thick and fast as the cross fertilization of ideas and knowledge continues. Participants at the session are assessing out of home advertising, scaling up for global competitiveness. Why is the client not comfortable with outdoor anymore? Or, especially as the data, what is the data? We show them this. Why is this? Let's hear their own explanation. Yeah. While this session is looking at unlocking the market for SMEs, funding and marketing. Look at your canvas and see where is money going to come from? Are you going to be SME specialist or are going to be a hybrid? You are doing, I'm a hybrid for example. I work for big multinationals, some of them. Ask yourself what's going to sustain your business. Okay? The role of integrated marketing communications in nation building is another session which participants are ready to use the knowledge learned for personal and national development. It has cut across all, all corners of um, marketing, advertising, communication, even as in branding Nigeria. And at, as it relates to my job, I think um, it's a new experience. I believe every participant is going back uh, home with new ideas about how to use uh, advertising and integrated marketing communication in general for national development. It's a climax signaling the end of another national advertising conference as outcomes will be used to reposition the advertising space to promote micro and macro growth and development of the economy in Abuja. I am Musa Abubakar, NTA News. Meanwhile, key players in media and communication research have met in Lagos, recommending that government at all levels and the private sector must begin to fully support academic research to boost national development. Wapu Fomuyi reports. This is the third annual general meeting of the Association of Media and Communication Researchers of Nigeria and stakeholders are gathered to brainstorm on the theme, communication, mass media and governance in Africa, trajectories, expectations. It is from the research that they conduct, talking to people who address the media, all right, and finding out where those lapses are, and they can then advise the media as to how they can bridge the gap between what they're doing wrong and what they're doing right. President of the association, Professor Eserune Mojaye, says, unlike developed nations who place premium on research 
Nigeria and other developing nations have not taken research and its importance seriously. How can get good governance in Nigeria in Africa? How can I get good governance for the people? What are the sport expectations? And what are the realities of ground? Those are the issues we are examining. It's for media researchers, media scholars to put heads together and find solutions to governance and media issues. The media is expected to hold government accountable to the people. The annual general meeting of the Association of Media and Communication Researchers of Nigeria thereafter moved into a technical session to address issues that will enhance the mass media and support research and development. In Lagos, Mwabufo Mwoye, NTA. And now let's actually head to Lagos where Michael is standing by with more reports. Hello, Michael. Persons in charge of environmental issues are creating awareness on the need for sustainable plastic value chains through circular economy. They emphasize this at a forum organized by the United Nations Industrial Development Organization in Lagos. Larry Bilei has details. A circular economy direction that significantly minimizes waste and extends life circle of products is being advocated by environmentalists and other stakeholders. Plastics is used basically in every aspect of life and the effects of plastic pollution to the environment are growing. Environmentalists are optimistic that plastic circular economy will reduce pollution and serve as a viable economic venture for the unemployed. For this to be effectively explored, however, there is a need for massive awareness campaigns. A lot of education is needed. We need to educate our people, especially the consumers. The, the initial culture we've had over the centuries to one that encourages us to reduce the waste we generate, to reuse what we have, and then recycle it when we can. For this pilot scheme for the plastic pollution is to create what we call hub. It's like a mini collection center for the plastic consumption. So it's an avenue where people that want to key into waste management gathered gather the plastics and take it to the hub center. Plastic circular economy strategies, action plan implementation, site selection in designated pilot areas mapped out by legal state environmental agencies were reviewed and discussed at the sensitization forum. In Lagos, Larry Bileyi, NT News. Guided by the zeal to entrench professionalism in theory and practice, the Society of Nigerian Broadcasters, SMB, is stretching its tentacles across the country and in expediting actions towards uh, san sanitizing the media business. About 53 practitioners were inducted into the Lagos chapter. In his message to the event, the Director General of the Nigerian Television Authority, Salihu Abdelhamid Dembos, who is the chairman of the Broadcasting Organizations of Nigeria, wants media professionals to be careful of what they broadcast as their content have huge impact on the society. Start the society. These more than 53 new inductees will not just add to the number, but are expected to be change agents in an era when fake news and propaganda are becoming the norms. Breaking the chain of falsehood is the task the Director General of the NTA, who was represented, believes is achievable once understanding the ethics of the profession is placed ahead of sensationalism. SMP right now is going to improve the standards and give the criteria of before you employ someone. Do not employ someone who just looks good and sounds good. The chairman of the induction ceremony and CEO of Channels TV, John Momo, who was represented, said practitioners must live above inherent challenges in the industry and fulfill their role as guardians of truth. Let us embrace this responsibility with dedication and integrity. We can uh, combine together to produce features, documentary, and a lot of programs that even make money to your boss as a member and even to the organization. This body, the Society of Nigerian Broadcasters, we now coordinate and then sanitize the industry and then 
us is just to be the ambassadors. Earlier, a pre-induction lecture was held where practitioners were reminded of the needs to preserve their position as the spoken side of the fourth estate of the realm. That is it from here. The news will be back after this break. Please. Communication experts have been encouraged to develop the right attitude and a flair for writing books to bridge the gap in information and communication prevalent in society. The message at the unveiling ceremony of a book titled Introduction to Strategic Communication written by Suleiman Ya Usuli. Dennis Temple has the details. With the ambience of anticipation and excitement, esteemed guests and communication enthusiasts gathered here to witness the unveiling of the book titled Introduction to Strategic Communication, authored by an unassuming public affairs analyst and a communication expert, Suleiman Asule. The book promises to be a guiding light in the realm of effective communication strategies. The book reviewer, Malam Garbashe, who emphasizes how strategic communication addresses contemporary challenges, offering practical insights and frameworks for individuals as an organization navigating the complexities of modern communication. It is an in-depth work. This book will be useful for just everyone. This book will be very useful to the upcoming and practicing uh, uh, journalists and public relations practitioners. The author of the book, Suleiman Sule, shared the inspiration behind the book and its relevance in today's dynamic communication landscape. We focus more on the kind of communication aspect used, especially in the last election, the 2023 general election. So we look at some of these coinage and, and see how strategic they were towards winning or losing the election. If adhere to what we had in the context of the book, uh, it's going to uh, give us a good outlook on how we should handle communication. Many are eager to explore the book's contents and apply its principles to enhance their own communication strategies. In Abuja, Dennis Temple, NTA News. Now let's talk business with Benny Adams. Benny. Thank you and welcome to business. The United States Agency for International Development, USAID, and some private entities are collaborating to promote the development of clean and renewable energy in some African countries, including Nigeria. $20 billion in the next five years is involved. Combined, uh, these two companies are committing to catalyzing $20 billion of climate finance over the next five years. We've catalyzed around $168 million worth of investment between Benin Republic and Nigeria. We've been able to deploy about 168 megawatts worth of uh, clean energy solutions. This is just scratching the surface as far as the investment that we need. And we're providing the opportunity to expand this partnership beyond these initial companies and allow us to really target those uh, interventions that are needed in order to make sure that we meet our mitigation and adaptation needs. Energy oil benchmarks were headed for a seventh straight weekly decline on worries over a global supply surplus and weak Chinese demand, although prices recovered ground on Friday after Saudi Arabia and Russia called for more OPEC Plus members to join output cuts. Brent crude features were up 1.93 cents at $75.98 a barrel, while U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude features were up $1.82 to $71.16 a barrel. Brent had earlier risen by $2, but both benchmarks slid to their lowest since late June in the previous session, a sign that many traders believe that market is oversupplied. And a quick look at the market. The bulls are back as the equities all share index appreciates by 0.12%. A total of 503.8 million shares in 5,747 deals corresponding to a market value of 7.206 billion naira were traded. Today's data shows 15% improvement in volume, 5% decline in turnover and 19% decline in deals. The current market capitalization is 39.2 trillion naira. Regency Alliance Insurance recorded highest volume of 70.2 million 
traded shares followed by mutual benefits assurance 67.3 million and USC of Nigeria 50.3 million. That is business news. Network News continues with Naja Atu. Thank you, Benny. It's always a pleasure to hear you talk billions. And speaking of money, the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, says its attention has been drawn by some individuals to the circulation of counterfeit banknotes, especially higher denominations for transactions in food markets and other commercial centers across major cities in the country. In a statement, the CBN indicates that it is in constant collaboration with relevant security and financial agencies to confiscate fake Naira banknotes, arrest and prosecute counterfeiters. Members of the public are encouraged to report anyone suspected of having counterfeit Naira notes to the nearest police station branch of the Central Bank of Nigeria or via contact cbn at cbn.gov.ng. Meanwhile, all deposit money banks, financial houses and bureau de change and the public are enjoined to be more vigilant and take precautionary measures to curtail the acceptance and distribution of counterfeit notes. Culprits should be warned that counterfeit offence is punishable by a term of imprisonment of not less than five years. For this reason, the CBN urges the public to embrace electronic mode of transaction. Let's take another break. There will be more reports when... You're just in time for Sports Update. With the African Games coming up between 8th and 23rd of March 2024, the Athletics Federation of Nigeria, AFN, is set to hold a crucial meeting on Sunday, December 10, 2023, to review its activities, including preparation plans for Nigeria athletics team for the Games. In football, due to Super Eagles goalkeeping crisis, the team's manager, Ose Paseru, is reportedly talking with cheaper United goalkeeper, Nigeria's Stanley Wabili who had kept six clean sheets from 12 appearances for his club in the South African top flight. The manager was spotted in the club's training ground to watch if the goalkeeper would be awarded the choice ahead of the 2024 Nations Cup. In another news, about 10,000 civil servants are competing as athletes in the Federal Civil Service Games in Mina, Niger State, with admonition to compete clean and fair. It is an avenue of creating jobs opportunities for a lot of youth and not only that it promotes economic development. All MDAs are here, they are competing amongst themselves. There is no way there won't be some bonding. The Federation of Public Service Games is standing tall in terms of producing athletes uh, for national competitions. In volleyball, Nigeria under 17 female volleyball team suffered another defeat to Egypt and it just concluded under 17 girls African Nations Volleyball Championship or still qualify for the World Championship coming up in 2024. This is a great achievement. Study before the uh, match, how to win, the weakness point, and the strength point for each player. Ahmad Zago reports that the Nigerian girls considered the trophy after they lost 1-3 in favor of their Egyptian counterpart at the Moshud Abiola National Stadium, Abuja. With sports update, Ulum Degutola, NT News. Now let's find out the weather prospects for Saturday. Come. The skies over the northern region during the past few days have been mostly sunny and clear. However, the Central Forecast Office in the Nigerian Meteorological Agency advised residents of this region to brace up for thick dust haze in the upcoming week. And so for Saturday, haziness is expected to the north and the north central region of the country with sunshine intervals over the north and patches of clouds expected to the north central. Down south, a cloudy morning is expected with prospects of afternoon into evening thunderstorms to the coastal parts of Cross River, Aquaibum, Rivers, and Bayelsa states. That's all for the forecast. I am Theodore Aitum. Thank you for watching. Hazy in the north, cloudy in the south, that's the weather prospect. And with that, 
We've come to the end of the network news this Friday. Thanks for watching. I'm Nadja Atutichani.